this work, we set out to try to find a competitor system that we could use to benchmark clockwork against on these three applications. And what we found is there isn't one. So as far as I can tell, there's no existing actively maintained system that can compile multi-rate applications of this size and complexity automatically. So uh, Soda and Darkroom don't support uh, multi-rate pi <coughs> don't support multi-rate pipelines, and actually Darkroom uh, doesn't support multi-pixel per cycle pipelines. It doesn't support throughput higher than one pixel per clock cycle. Aetherling uh, doesn't scale the pipelines with dozens of stages. I uh, emailed the authors of the FPGA extension of the CPU DSL Polymage, and they said that the uh, FPGA extension is not publicly available. Its source code is gone. <coughs> Um, Rigel and Halide HLS require manual sizing of FIFOs between stages. Uh, HIPAX FPGA extension is no longer actively maintained. It's uh, an image processing DSL from Germany. And so instead, we're going to compare to HLS C++ implementations of each algorithm, where we unroll the reduce loops and try to pipeline each uh, loop nest. And what you see in this plot is that uh, just doing a sort of naive HLS implementation of these applications alone cannot achieve the throughputs of clockwork. So. On the x-axis, we have each application. MP is max pool, and MP1 is max pool at one pixel per cycle. Uh, GP is Gaussian pyramid, so for example, GP4 is Gaussian pyramid at four pixels per clock cycle, and SEF is synthetic exposure fusion. And this isn't a super interesting chart, but the uh, y-axis just shows improvement in uh, speed up versus the HLS implementation. And even for a one-stage application like max pooling, um, clockwork is substantially faster than a naive HLS implementation. And then as the pipeline depth increases, the gap between clockwork and the HLS implementation uh, grows enormously. So for a very large application, like synthetic exposure fusion at a high throughput, it's more than a thousand times faster than a naive HLS implementation. And these throughputs on the previous uh, slide that were used to construct those speed up numbers um, were taken from the Vivado HLS reports. So the number of clock cycles that the app is estimated to take. Um, which is really just a kind of conceptual number, right, that's produced uh, not even in simulation, but by static analysis of the generated HLS code. So this chart shows the actual throughput of synthetic exposure fusion at 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32 pixels per clock cycle versus what you would expect, uh, or it shows the measured throughput, and this line is the measured, and the dotted line is the expected throughput, or the or ideal throughput. And what you can see is that the actual throughput we measured on AWS uh, when we ran these accelerators for real, is quite close to uh, the ideal throughput that you would expect. So now, how does resource utilization compare to the naive HLS uh, versions? And what you see is that um, at low throughputs, Clockwork's resource utilization is better, even though the designs are faster. So this chart has the same basic structure as the um, uh, performance improvement chart, except the y-axis now is the improvement in LUT utilization compared to the naive HLS implementations. And what you see is that when you get up to very high throughputs, you've duplicated the processing elements in the design enough that uh, Clockwork actually needs more LUTs than um, the uh, naive implementation. But remember that even at one pixel per clock cycle, Clockwork has substantially higher throughput. So at 32 pixels per clock cycle, for example, SEF uses you know maybe four times as many LUTs, but it's more than a thousand times faster than the other HLS implementation. Flip-flop utilization, it's a very similar story. A DSP utilization, a very similar story again, except max pooling doesn't use any DSPs, so there's no change with throughput. And then BRAM utilization is a little bit weird. So in some cases, as throughput goes up, when throughput gets very high, the uh, synthesis tool changes the way that it maps memories. So basically, as throughput goes up, the total size of all memories in the application doesn't increase. So GP32 needs about the same number of bytes of memory as GP1. However, it needs those bytes of the bytes of memory that are used to create the reuse buffers to have much higher bandwidth. And so what you see here is basically the trend where as throughput goes up, the memory in the application is partitioned across larger numbers of lower utilization VRAMs or lower occupancy VRAMs. And when the uh, throughput reaches 32, for some applications, the synthesis tool's patience for lower occupancy VRAMs runs out and it starts mapping um, these very small high bandwidth reuse buffers or banks of reuse buffers to uh, LUTs and flip-flops instead of VRAMs and VRAM utilization goes down, which means that uh, suddenly the improvement spikes up again. Uh, here's an energy efficiency comparison of Clockwork, a V100 GPU, which is a big beefy data center GPU, a K80 GPU, which is an older, smaller GPU, and an 8-thread uh, Intel CPU. And what you can see is that for, uh, so the x-axis is max pooling Gaussian pyramid and SEF at 32 pixels per clock cycle for Clockwork, and scheduled by the Halide GPU auto scheduler made by Selfus Utas for the GPUs, and the 
master uh, halide auto scheduler for the CPU. And this is energy efficiency, and the red line is the clockwork theoretical peak, which we got from taking the throughput of the application and dividing it by um, the power consumption of the AWS F1 FPGA when it was at rest. And what you can see here is that um, basically for very shallow applications like max pooling, um, GPUs are essentially unbeatable, large GPUs are essentially unbeatable. And then the uh, performance of the GPUs and the CPU drops off substantially faster than the FPGA with pipeline depth. And so by the time you get out to a much larger pipeline like SEF, what you see is that the uh, FPGA is actually noticeably better even than the best GPU. There is a problem with the static scheduling strategy, which is these designs do stress the tool chain. So here's a slightly different chart to illustrate this problem. On the x-axis, we've got the usual app, so max pooling one, max pooling two, max pooling four, and then Gaussian pyramid and SEF. So this is roughly in order from smallest app to largest app by total FPGA resources consumed. And on the y-axis, we have the total time required by the Vivado tool chain to compile the C++ code generated by Clockwork. And what you see is that it's very stable at uh, you know under 10,000 seconds. And then when you start getting into SEF at about eight pixels per cycle, suddenly you hit the knee of an exponential curve and place and route time absolutely explodes. So that uh, doing something substantially larger than SEF32 um, would probably be completely hopeless, right? That it would just take way too much time. You'd, you're spending at this point, you know, hours and hours of compile time and it's going up exponentially with application size. So something like local Laplacian filters or, you know, a hundred or multi hundred stage camera pipeline would just be completely out of the question at high throughputs with this strategy. So we're actually currently doing some work to uh, mitigate this problem by using a mostly static strategy, but then breaking up the application into smaller processes that communicate through FIFOs where necessary to keep the total compile time for any given piece of the application down. So uh, this code is open source. It's all on my GitHub repo under uh, Clockwork. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to get in touch with me and let me know. I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you in the next video.